Saturday Mystery. My name is George, and I'm the best 11-year-old detective in this town. I know pretty much all there is to know about solving mysteries. I have $26 in library fines from overdue mystery novels, so I know what I'm talking about. And I'm a bit of a rule breaker. It all started that Saturday morning. The house was quiet. Too quiet. By 7 a.m., my little sister was usually terrorizing the household, and it was nearly 10.30. I slipped on my trench coat over my pajamas, put on my fedora, and began my investigation. As soon as I walked downstairs into the eerily empty kitchen, I immediately noticed that something was off. The chairs were stacked in the corner of the room. Fill in the blank with the adverb that best completes the sentence. Dramatically, elegantly, neatly, ele dramatically, elegantly, neatly. I took out my magnifying glass, which I always have in my pocket for such occasions. Leaning close to the floor, I could see pizza crumbs from last night. So as I suspected, no one had been mopping. Curious. I made my way to the dining room, where I thought I heard rustling and hushed voices. But before I turned the corner... My brother Peter appeared. He was carrying a paper bag in his arms. When he saw me, he jolted with surprise. As a teenager, Peter never loses his cool. He seemed a bit for an average Saturday. Fill in the blank with the adjective that best completes the sentence. Irritable, nervous, eager, nervous, irritable, nervous, eager, nerve, irritable, nervous. Peter quickly set the bag out of sight. Hey, little brother, he said, more brightly than it usually came out. Um, want to play with my tablet? Peter never offered to let me touch his precious tablet. In fact, the last time I had it, I recall being told to keep my grimy nerd paws off it. I stuck my hands in my trench coat pockets and glared at him suspiciously. Or, I know, let's walk in the park, he said ushering me away from the dining room. But I haven't even had breakfast yet, I protested. He looked around the kitchen like there might be a plate of pancakes lying around. Then he threw open the cabinet door and grabbed a whole box of cereal. We'll eat it on the way. Come on, Peter said, gesturing at me to hurry up. Fill in the blank with the adverb that best completes the sentence. Impatiently, carelessly, Seriously, careless, impatiently. I was hauled against my will to the neighborhood park. Between handfuls of cereal, Peter talked about cars that he wanted or something. I wasn't really listening. I was looking for a way to give him the slip and escape back to the house to investigate the suspicious activities. I made a show of squinting across the park. Isn't that the girl from school that you like? What was her name? Jenny? I asked. Good detectives have to know how to create a diversion. Peter instantly jumped up, wiping the cereal from his hands onto his pants. He messed with his hair as he looked around frantically. Huh? Where? He said, his voice cracking. With Peter momentarily distracted, I bolted towards the jungle gym. I'm a few growth spurts behind Peter, so I knew I couldn't outrun him. My best shot was to lose him in the playground. I headed for the most area. Fill in the blank with the adjective that best completes the sentence. Overflowing. Crowded. I could hear Peter yelling behind me, but I didn't stop to look back. I hopped past a game of tag and dove into the tube slide. I hid inside waiting patiently. That's one thing they don't tell you about being a detective. It's a whole lot of waiting. I once had a six-hour steak out of the kitchen with no bathroom breaks to see if Peter was the one eating all the cookies. The mystery remains unsolved. After a kid started yelling at me for blocking the slide, I had to leave my hideout. I spotted Peter on the other side of the park searching in a bush. In my early days as a gumshoe, I learned the hard way that bushes make very uncomfortable hiding places. I made it to the sidewalk and straightened my hat. I popped a gumball into my mouth and strolled back home. To avoid suspicion, you have to act natural. Fill in the blank with the adverb that best completes the sentence. Casually. On my way, I spotted my friend Izzy walking down the sidewalk. 
Izzy usually had swimming on Saturday mornings, so it was a little fishy that she just happened to be in the neighborhood. From her hand was swinging a colorful bag with tissue paper in it. I crossed the street and caught up with her. Hello there, Izzy, I greeted. Her eyes got wide when she saw me. George, what are you up to? she said, holding the bag behind her back. I was going to ask you the same thing, I responded, blowing a bubble that I'm sure was impressive. I live down the street. I was just enjoying the weather, she smiled. She was an expert fibber. But I really should be going. Nice running into you. Fill in the blank with the adverb that best completes the sentence. Reluctantly, carefully, Izzy skipped away. I was distracted by how cool the dragon on the back of her shirt was, and I let my guard down. Suddenly, Peter's arms swooped down around me. Got you, you con artist, he said. Look, even the best detectives get caught unawares sometimes. I'm not a con artist, I'm a private eye, I corrected. Yeah, and I've got to keep a better private eye on you, Peter said. Come on, let's go home. As we approached the house, I looked for clues. Balloons on the mailbox, a dropped invitation, an unfamiliar car in the driveway. But there was nothing. Everything looked perfectly... Fill in the blank with the adjective that best completes the sentence. Current. Informal. Ordinary. I hesitantly opened the front door, preparing myself for a clamor of surprise and happy birthday. But the house was quiet as a crypt, though I couldn't say I'd ever been in a crypt before. I turned the corner into the dining room. It looked the same as it always did. I let out a disappointed sigh. Oh, I almost forgot, dude. Happy birthday, Peter said, giving me a slap on the shoulder. Then he snatched my fedora off my head and spun it on his finger. Give it back, I demanded, trying to grab it. Peter laughed as he kept it out of reach. Come and get it, he said. It was then that I decided that a chase scene was as good a way as any to end a detective story. He dashed to the back door and ran outside. I followed close on his heels. Fill in the blank with the adverb that best completes the sentence. I stepped out the door and skidded to a halt. Happy birthday! came the exclamation from the mass of friends and family gathered in the backyard. Like I said, even the best detectives are caught unawares sometimes. Snack time. Help Rolly and Penelope find nouns and verbs in a vending machine. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Find all of the nouns. Try tapping this one. Try tapping this one. Try tapping this one. A verb is an action word. Find all of the verbs.